everybody welcome to handa talks to peril uh, i'm your host mayura and today we have with us ramya ramya is a mother to a 7 month old baby and today we are going to talk to her about a really um, amazing thing that she would like to share with us uh, regarding her pregnancy so firstly welcome to handa talks to peril ramya thank you thank you mayura thank you so much how are you I'm doing good. I hope you're doing good. Yes, I'm doing good. So, uh I know life with a 7 month old is very very hectic. So, uh, how yeah. how are you like kind of coping with that? Uh well, first of all, there's no proper sleep, so you should forget <laughs> about sleep once you're a mother. Uh and the most when I get a 4 hour sleep straight, I feel like I'm very lucky. that uh, I, ha- i had to uh, i got to sleep for 4 hours straight and then i uh, at nights uh, usually it's at least 2 to 3 feeds so that is one thing that uh, keeps me up and during the day he sleeps well uh, for 2 hours sometimes during that time i try to rest and other than that i'm also uh, doing phd so i am in the last stages of my uh, thesis so uh, getting my work done along with uh, being a new mom is uh, kind of a uh, hustling life <laughs> no i mean i cannot imagine like uh, i mean doing a phd itself is like a full time uh, job <laughs> you know yeah and, uh, that too with a baby in the doing picture doing a phd is a full time job it's an overtime job actually luckily uh i uh, conceived during the last stages of my phd so all my experimental work was done so i had only the writing part left uh, so uh, that's a blessing in one way but still it's hard i'm just trying to keep it up and uh, okay. that too i'm doing it from iit madras so it's even more hectic you know so many things that you have to take yeah. care of a very good support system at home right my mom my mom completely uh, takes care of the baby yeah uh, there's my sister my dad my husband so all these people uh, support me they let me do my work and uh, i don't take part much in the household activities as well they manage that too so uh, it's completely their support that i'm able to do uh, I'm able to do both no yeah, absolutely i was all our listeners that there was a recent study which was done which said that uh, parents of kids younger than 6 months get 1 to 3 hours of sleep only this is like your yes. good quality sleep okay like that sleep that happens at a stretch so 1 to 3 yeah. hours only if you have a kid that young so that's like like absolutely uh, very hard to yeah. believe right? but it's true it's it happens and i'm uh, very lucky my boy he sleeps even though he wakes up he uh, has his feed and he goes back to sleep i have known parents you know doing even uh, tougher job because their babies are uh, very colic even at 6 7 months of Correct. age and uh, yeah so it's very tough i'm lucky in that way that even though i get a 4 hour stretch at that time but again i can go back to sleep once he wakes yeah no no absolutely uh, uh, so uh, So another thing like that Ramya did share with us that we can actually touch upon was her uh, labor. So um, we want to talk about what happened during her labor. Now, because, uh, what is in, inducing a labor? This happens when natural contractions are not happening. So labor is not actually progressing the normal way. So they give you an injection um, called pitocin. This is um, um, uh, like a mimic of oxytocin uh, that normally is produced in your body. and pitocin causes contractions to happen and that is that will kind of help the baby to get uh, you know birthed normally so ramya was induced and i would love to ask you ramya like i have heard that uh, when you are induced the pain is more than it is when your contractions start normally so what was yes. your experience like with induction uh, so uh, I was not having any pains at all when I went to the uh, hospital. I went because I finished my forty week gestation period. Oh. I have waited till the yeah till the forty weeks uh, gestation period. I have waited for the pains to occur on their own. 
but it didn't happen. 25th November is my due date. So that's the end of my 40 week. Uh, and 24th November, just a day before, I went to the hospital to, you know, see if there's something wrong or why I'm not having any pains. It's the end of my pregnancy and, you know, all my parents, relatives and all, everyone are a bit like, when is the baby due? When is the baby due? Or, or the baby's born and you're not sharing it with us. So yeah. that kind of, because no one is uh, till that late, till 40 weeks. In India, at least I have not heard of anyone that late, you know. So I went to the hospital and at the hospital, what uh, the doctor suggested was uh, my sugars were slightly high. Like I think 140 is the limit and they were around 140, 150. Uh, so what she suggested is uh, you can wait for a week or 10 more days and then come back uh, but it's uh, slightly risky because you are uh, having uh, slight uh, sugar high levels so I would suggest you uh, you go for uh, you know induction of labor so I'm a first time mom I don't know about any of this and my parents and all had you know normal deliveries they don't know what inducing labor was I have read about uh, inducing uh, labor, you know, in uh, similar podcasts and other uh, places. So I thought, okay, uh, because whatever is good for the baby, I'm going to take a call. So uh, I went, I joined. And once I uh, got admitted, I was induced with one dose of the drug, phytosin, like you have mentioned. So uh, nothing, uh, usually they say that once you have been induced, varies like for some people only one dose is enough for some people it's two for some people it's three for some <laughs> varies so uh, the time I was induced the first dose I didn't feel anything uh, it was a vaginal uh, induction initially so then uh, they waited for uh, I think a couple of hours to see what the progress is like and it's absolutely nothing then they have given me another dose, the second dose, and uh, still nothing vaginal. So then they gave me a third dose oral, uh, third or fourth, I think was oral. Then came the fifth, then came the sixth, then came the seventh. Okay, uh, I think at the sixth dose, I think that's the maximum you can go. Six to eight is the maximum doses you can give uh, to a you know, pregnant woman. So after the six dose, I was a little, you know, is there something wrong with me? Why is it not happening? I was really tensed. Uh, so the doctor is like, it happens for some people, it, you know, within the first dose itself, you start contracting and all that. But uh, for some, till six, it doesn't happen. For me, even at six, it didn't happen. And I was a little worried. The doctor said, okay, don't worry. Uh, we will give one more and we'll see how it progresses. So they gave me one more, seven. Still nothing happened. So the doctor is like, Ramya, I'm pushing your limits. The eighth is the final one. We can't give you any more doses beyond that. We will have to consider what your options are once I give you the eighth dose and still nothing happens. So they've given me the final dose, the eighth dose. And uh, I think after uh, three, four hours of the eighth dose, the doctor came to check me. Uh, still there was uh, nothing. She, she was like, okay, you are absolutely fine. Uh, she checked for my uh, dilation. She said, you are not dilated at all. Eight doses and we can't give you any more. This is the limit. So either you have to go for uh, uh, C-section. Uh, if you want to plan it, and you know, in India, there is this Mugura thing and all that. If you want to wait for something like that, you can wait or, you know, you can just uh, go directly. But then by that time, I had food. So immediately, I couldn't go into the operation theater. So they said, we'll wait till morning. So this has happened over a period of 36 hours. Like 24th afternoon at 12 o'clock, I got my first dose. And the last dose was on 25th at around the 6 o'clock, 6, 7 o'clock. Okay. So in a period of 36 hours, uh, this whole thing happened. Now, 36, I think, 30, 32 hours. Yeah. So, finally, uh, after the eighth dose, the doctor checked nothing. So, she left. The moment she left the chamber, my water broke. So, 
So when uh, my water broke, I immediately uh, sent someone to call her back. She immediately came back. She checked. She's like, okay, the water breaking is a good sign. Is the first step. But then yeah. uh, she checked the dilution. It's only one centimeter. Uh, I mean, that's like nothing. You have to be diluted yeah. uh, 10 centimeters to start pushing. And I was not in severe pain. Uh, so she said, okay, we, we'll see till morning. Anyway, you had your food, so you cannot get a C-section right away. And anyway, your water has broken. So we'll see uh, what we can do. Yeah. So at 9 o'clock in the night, my water broke and 9.30 or so, the contractions started. Till then, uh, when the water broke, uh, there were mild contractions, uh, very mild, like, like period pains. Then uh, uh, half an hour or one hour in the uh, uh, process, uh, I mean, big doses of contraction medicine, you can, uh, I mean, uh, the, the dose was so high and the pains were so severe, I cannot even tell you. Even if I think about that time, you know, it gives me shivers still. So, uh, I, one thing what I felt was after the sixth dose, I should have stopped and gone for a C section. Okay. But I pushed it till the eighth dose, which is the maximum. And uh, that was something I feel I could have done another way. But uh, the pains were very severe. They kept on going. I mean, uh, the duration between the contractions came down to less than uh, one minute and 30 seconds. And still, you wouldn't believe me that my dilation was still one centimeter only. Oh, I was oh. not dying. So the baby was completely, you know, she said that the baby was a uh, floating baby. Uh, it's called a flo floating baby. Mm. The baby is very high up uh, your system has not descended down but the pains are because you have been induced mm -hmm. uh, so much your body took so much time to, that thing to trigger that okay it actually started mm. it took a long time for me and the contractions became I mean severe I couldn't bear the pain I was like please give me something give me anything and get me uh, get rid of this pain the doctors were like uh, they checked they have observed from uh, 9.30 around until 2 o'clock in the night. So around those uh, four and a half, five hours I have, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of suffering that I have been through. And it got worse by the second. So finally at 2 o'clock the doctor said, uh, okay, there's no point in waiting anymore. We, uh, because we have waited, we have you know, you have borne so much pain and we waited for so long. So many induces, now it's better you go for a C-section because uh, it can't be a normal delivery. Uh, after Because the dilation is like one centimeter, nothing, you can't do anything, you can't push. Correct. So, yeah, so finally when uh, the doctor said you can go for emergency C-section, uh, they have given me an epidural. So... Even you can't imagine to give the epidural also, I was not in a condition where I was constantly rigid. So that, you know, they have to give it to your spine between uh, the two vertebrae or something. And yes. I couldn't sit properly uh, because you have to sit without moving. They will uh, give you that uh, injection to your spine so that it will numb the whole uh, lower portion of your body. But... Uh, I said, okay, now the contraction has stopped. It is going to start in 30 seconds. You do whatever you have to do very fast. And the hospital staff were also very uh, understanding, the nurses and all. So they waited for the second the contraction to stop. They immediately did it so fast that within 30 seconds, I think maximum one minute, uh, they have given me and my body got numb. And that was the time in four or five hours that helped rent really yeah. peacefully. Uh, was very much you know exhausting and tiring and a lot of pain I was in and uh, at 2 26 in 26 minutes itself the whole process was done whatever they had to do and the baby was uh, delivered wow so, that is the story you are among 6% of women 
percent yeah. women it? actually yeah yeah 60 percent women actually uh, you know uh, deliver before their due date okay. or on their due date some would you know just go a little bit you know uh, here and there but to cross your due date so to go to 40 weeks and more it's just 6 to 8 percent so very rare you know that yeah. babies are like you know taking that long but mm-hmm. your baby was maybe very happy inside you <laughs> he was like yeah. i don't want to come out at all so yeah. so i and wanted to ask over the baby was uh, overweight not overweight hmm. it's overweight it was uh, 4.35 kgs when the baby was yeah. born yeah so, so uh, heavy. the doctor said even if you would have gone for normal delivery even halfway through we might have had to you know correct emergency c section because the head was uh, bigger i mean i think there is some the head should be these many centimeters and mine was well above that where you cannot push it push it so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's I usually it, the initial scans and all we knew it that this is the baby is heavy the baby is healthy uh, the last scan i had the baby was around three and a half kg and that was the last scan mm-hmm. so the not three and a half i think 3.25 or something and mm. that was the last scan and after that that was the eighth month i guess in one month uh, it has put on more than one kilo so, so it was either way it would, i would have gone for uh, I, it, I would i should have gone for the c-section i have went through so much or at least after the six dose of that uh, uh phytocin I should have gone, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's all over now. I'm yeah. still, uh, you know, I'm not able to forget that memory, but uh, the baby has made it easier, you know. Yes. Uh, it's been seven months uh, after that, and I feel like, okay, it's all worth it. It's worth it. Yes. When you were telling about the induction, right, that uh, how often were they giving you, like you said, eight, Time they induced you. So, how much gap were they leaving between the inductions? I think four or five hours. Four or five hours. Achha, so, they give you yeah. that much time to see if contractions are starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Achha. Okay, okay. My God, so uh, amazing. Yeah, Ramya. Uh, because any... so many doses were given now. So, the pain, I think, was coming from all those drugs rather than the baby moving or uh, something like that. It was exactly. mostly because of the, yeah, drug. Exactly. So, That's why I asked you this, Kim, how long were they waiting? Because the fact that you got that whole. time. Yes, yeah, so. they, they waited for four, five hours. I think that is the duration between which the uh, contractions start once the drug is given. So, okay. yeah, from the hospital's part, I think they have done a uh, hmm. decent job. Got but it. my baby was like, uh, he was uh, floating, I mean, too far up uh, the system. So that is why it didn't happen. Right. Otherwise, usually once the one, uh, with me, there was another lady also. She, after one uh, dose of induction itself, her waters broke and she went into labor and she got a normal delivery. I mean, she had right. a normal delivery. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, and that varies with every person and uh, <laughs> this is my story. <laughs> Right, right. And all stories are important and all stories need to be heard because it helps you to, you know, like prepare yourself, plan ahead, all of these things. And mental preparation, I think it's very, very important, especially in pregnancy yeah, yeah. and labor, because actually we are not aware only of what it is like, what, how, how much, you know, time do they wait, what experiences are you going to have, nothing, right? It's all first time that we go through and that shock yeah. is more so it's better that yeah. you know, we learn from other people. You know, you might have read so many things, seen so many videos, all that prepare you to some extent. But what you go through at that point of time is completely your own experience. It doesn't match with what you've seen or read so far. It's Correct. completely a unique experience to everyone. Yeah. And uh, if uh, if I want to give you know any kind of suggestion to anyone, yes, check your baby's weight and if they if they are even slightly more than three and a half kgs after birth, if you are okay with you know going for a cesarean uh, section, I think it's better to go rather than be induced so much. Now I feel what happened to all those doses of medicine that were in my body. What did the what's the damage that 
you know uh, that drug has on my Correct. body you don't know right now maybe maybe something down the road maybe for the next pregnancy or i don't know what will happen Correct. uh that is something you know maybe it's putting on weight or some other uh, hormonal imbalance what will, what it will do is something that is beyond i think so in so i would say if it doesn't the first few doses of medicine if it doesn't work then the better you go for a c section rather than wait for a normal delivery i thought i wanted to go for a, a normal delivery so that is the reason i have uh, taken so many doses correct uh, but i don't think once your baby is more than 3 and a half kg uh, the normal delivery process is very painful and you know you will have other Uh, tears, tears, and all. Yeah. So all those things will add up even more uh, than you know going for a cesarean section. Even you, you can't think of the idea of your body being cut and ripped open. Uh, that's that you will heal. But I have I have known some of my uh, friends, you know, gone through tears. There are other kind of problems that come associated mm-hmm. with it. if the baby is heavy and you are not able to get induced after a few doses of induction i would suggest go for a c section don't wait like me you know till the maximum limit of induction nay nee, absolutely and very useful advice also because that this is exactly what i was telling you that you know when you learn from somebody else's experience you will make different decisions right when it's when it's yeah. coming to you so exactly. and it's important to hear all these things because this help you you know to take decisions for your own self yeah. so um, so thank you so much ramya for taking time and doing this interview with us and uh, we hope to see your baby also soon like all the best for your phd yeah thank you thank you so much so i will be i think submitting this year i have done uh, i'm done writing my thesis few final things and uh, yeah hopefully i will graduate this year yes awesome great great stuff yeah so thank you thank you so much ramya thank you take yeah. care bye. Bye. bye bye thank you bye